Media, come on in there right now. Governor, Governor, why education? Because it's more important as a ticket to opportunity for individuals, Americans, than ever before, and because it is now the key to our international economic standing. Basically, we went for years with a system that educated a few people very, very well, and the rest of us not up to international standards. Now, we have to dramatically increase the education levels of all Americans, because more and more frontline workers have to learn newer and newer things. The people that are not being educated today are those that are keeping our growth down. If we can't educate everybody, our incomes will go up as a country. What about the automobile industry? Will we ever regain our position as the number one automaker in America and throughout the world? We will if we can convince Americans to buy American cars again. I mean, that's basically going to be the key. We have to get market share back for the American automobiles. We plainly can do that. If you look at a number of the American cars that are being made here now, Americans are starting to buy them again. But a lot of the Americans that are tonight expressing regret that these jobs are being lost are Americans that didn't buy the cars that those people were making. So we're going to have to think about that as a country. The automakers are going to have to work to organize their plants differently. We're going to have to help them in the government control health care costs and give them the incentives to always put in the most modern equipment and to keep retraining their workers. We just have to change. If we can get market share back in America, we can put people back to work making automobiles. Governor, how can, Governor, how can we revitalize the Mid-South? Excuse me? How can we revitalize the Mid-South? By giving people real incentives to invest here, by changing the banking structure and developing some community development banks, by investing more money in the technologies of the future here and environmental technologies, environmental cleanup, aviation technologies, and by educating our people better by providing better health care. These are the things that I've been working on for a long time. Very near here in Blyville, Arkansas, we have an economic explosion going on because of the new core steel mills and the things that have happened around there. That's the kind of thing we're going to have to do all up and down the Mississippi Delta. Governor, Governor Senator, are there Governor. states that you plan on targeting for Southern Super Tuesday? I mean, what's your strategy? No, I'm not going to write any of them off on Super Tuesday down here. Senator Harkin tonight pointed out that you're the only major candidate that has not won a primary. Is that concerning? Where is he running a primary? Iowa. <laughs> well, I'm the only major candidate that hasn't had a primary on the border of the state. He's here tonight. I mean, well, I think it's interesting that I'm the only major candidate that's gotten delegates outside his own region. See where he is I got right? more votes than Senators Harkin and Kerry did put together in New Hampshire and Maine. I did better than Senator Songus in uh, South Dakota tonight with basically no time there. I just showed up for two debates. So I would say that uh, that was the comment of a desperate man. Where do you would get you? your first win? I'll guarantee you, if we had, Senator Harkin wouldn't even allow us to have a secret ballot in Iowa. If we had an election in Arkansas with a secret ballot, I believe I could win it. Is there, is the special session going to hurt your campaign any of that time? No, away? it kept me out of South Dakota. I think we'd have done better in South Dakota. I mean, I was astonished that we did as well as we did with no campaign there. How can a Bill Clinton presidency improve the economy that George Bush has not been able to improve? Well, I would have a national economic strategy, for one thing. And I would organize this economy, working with the private sector, in ways that would permit us to compete with the high-wage countries like Germany and Japan. I'd give business incentives to invest in this country, and I'd take away the incentives to move jobs overseas. I'd invest in education and control health care costs and get us going again in the right direction. It's not all that. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You just have to be able to lead and energize and challenge people and, and basically get everybody in this country to assume a new set of responsibilities. I think we can do it. Do you think anyone final, else will get question. in the race? I don't know. Final uh, I mean, don't know, don't care. Do you welcome any other candidates? Absolutely. Anybody wants to run, I'd welcome them to get in here. What about Brown, Governor? Is he a threat at all to the party, to the campaign? No, I don't think so. I mean, he's a, I frankly agree with some of the arguments he's making, the, the, the influence of organized interest groups is too great. But that's because the system favors PACs, favors expensive campaigns, doesn't mandate open airwaves debates, and frankly because there's no national direction. So if you have different political direction and you control the excesses of the system, the things that Jerry Brown's complaining about wouldn't be there. Of course, he uh, basically, for most of his career, was one of the principal offenders in terms of raising big money. So. 
you know, I don't know if it's a serious campaign, but there are a lot of people who know that there's too much influence of interest groups in politics, and they're right. Thank you, Thank you. Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Oh. Yeah.